Hello and welcome back once again to more Sunbreak. My name is of course Hollow and today we're talking follower quests. The new mechanic lets us finally work with many of the NPCs of this game. Not only can we join new NPCs in jolly cooperation, but a good selection of the originals can join us too. And this makes for a fun experience, whether you're getting the, the nice flavor text as they join a hunt with you, the conversations before or after the hunt, which do follow a little storyline. Not to mention, the actual rewards you get from these quests are worth doing. A whole weapon type that look incredible, ones that I wish I'd actually unlocked and used in my original playthrough, and also relevant and cool looking armor sets. So I'm going to explain the follow missions in full, the rewards and why they're worth your time, and how to get the ones you specifically want. So let's begin. Follower missions can be found in the special tab in the quest counter. Via the follower collab quest tab, we can choose either support surveys or follower quests specifically. Those follower quests are the ones that unlock your main rewards, like the Royal Orders, Weapon and designs, the armor sets, and then further are as a way to actually unlock new NPCs to use in support surveys. I view follower quests as sort of the story and the unlock side of things, and then you have support surveys as the fun challenges with the NPCs you've unlocked so far, and the extra details like changing what weapon they're actually using. NPCs can't use every weapon, but they can choose between the ones that that said NPC is versed with, which yeah, that makes sense. Each with their own mini stories, flavor text, and logical rewards. The follower quests reach up to star level 6, which is the current peak of Sunbreak, featuring a few of the very end game monsters. To unlock the follower quests, you'll need to progress the main story and eventually the NPCs will want your attention, as shown by the purple icon above the head, much like you see urgent quests and that red icon. Each follower has their own multi-part storyline, so after you complete the first quest with them, they'll then again ask to hunt with you in the future if you progress the game enough and give you new quests for more rewards and more unlocks. The rewards for completing a follower quest or full storyline is, as I mentioned, the Royal Order weapons tied to that NPC, their permanent unlock lock as a support follower and sometimes even a few armor sets. Let's talk about the Royal Order weapons then, which are these wonderful weapons featuring this awesome design. I think this is super clean and I genuinely really regret not running like the Dual Blades version at least as I went through the expansion originally. There's a couple examples here. We have the Great Sword, which is huge, simple, but really cool. The Long Sword, which is a big Zweihander, that's a perfect pick. And then, say, the Hunting Horn, which is a hilarious full commit to that horn concept. Naturally, all the weapons get their own design and options. No one's left out, and I think they're not bad weapons at all. In fact, some of them I think are respectable options in the end game of Sunbreak 1.0, well worth using if you do really like their designs. So you could use these as a brilliant stepping zone in your progress through the story, or just full commit with the Rarity 10 versions if you want to. But now, let's stop beating around the bush and tell you how to get each and every one so you know which follower quest lines to focus to get yours. So on that note, let's begin with the Great Sword. You unlock the Royal Order Great Sword from the Gallius quest here, Burning Air, Trembling Earth, and this has you against a Rathalos and a Tigrex. Once you finish this quest, you can go talk to Gallius and he will just give you the design for the Great Sword. It's certainly one of the later follower quests though at a five star level so keep that in mind great sword players you're going to get yours a little bit later but it will be higher rarity because of that much like the long sword which also comes from the same tier from fugan and this is from the flame that burns within this is Zinoga and gore so another more tough one but again higher rarity to begin with much earlier than that if you want the sword and shield you're going to need to go on a quest with fiorain uh, an audience with the queen will send you against a rathian and after you complete it again go speak with the npc and you'll get the design as just a two star quest that's going to be an easy one but let's go a bit further uh jewel blades is with utsushi this is an ace idea here and you just go have yeah of course you have to go after a zinoga with him and uh, pretty straightforward thankfully to get the insect glaive we're going to need to go hunt with rondine the quest a muddy revival against an almadron is going to be the one you need to do to get the lance we're going to need to go on a hunt with minoto uh, we're going to go hunt a mizutsune in the quest cherry blossoms in battle meanwhile in the same four star tier we're going to go on a quest with arlo for the gun lance the dust off those hunting boots quest with the seragos that's going to be the one for the gun lance also in the four star level uh, we have the quest for the hunting horn with utsushi this is the follow-up quest with utsushi breaking the ice 
base, having us hunt a Luna Garon, that's going to be how you get the hunting horn. Earlier on than that, we have a three-star follower quest. This is for the hammer with Arlo. The enshrined resentment quest is going to send us against just a single Magnum Allo. Switch Axe users, you're going to get yours much later as well. This is a five-star quest, and it's a follow-up quest with Gallius. Fire versus fire is going to send us against a Basil Goose. And like I said, this is a follow-up quest with Gallius, so you will need to do his first one before this. For your Charge Blade Royal Order design, though, we're just going to need to do a quest with Jay, the Bazirius Buzzkill quest to fight not one but two Bazirios. That's going to be the unlock for that. And then finally, for the range designs, uh, for the bow, we're going to go on a quest with Hanoa. Not your average picnic is going to send us against a Rathalos. That's going to get us the bow. Very early on, though, we can get ourselves the heavy bow gun with Lucica. This is the fruit versus firearms quest, just against an early Busherton, and that should be pretty straightforward. But last but not least, we still have the light bow gun. In the three-star follower quest, we have another one with Lucica here, and it is the tough lesson where we're going to go hunt a Garangom. After that, you get the design, and that's all 14 weapons. Keep in mind though, some of these quests are unlocked by doing the first in a chain, such as Lucica here and this Garam Gorm quest being second in her quest line. All right, with the weapons explained then, let's now talk about the armor sets that you can unlock via these follow quests. And as I mentioned, I think they're pretty cool. These armor sets will require tickets or certificates rather uh, tied to follow quests. So as you do follow quests, you get these various levels of one, two, and three. And depending on what armor set you're crafting, you'll need one of those levels or multiple to craft them. We have a nice variety of sets that you can get from the follower quests. Generally, they're all unlocked by doing the quest tied to the NPC, but there are a couple of weird ones. The Night Squire is thankfully a really easy and early game one. Literally, the first, one of the first follow quests you can do is, of course, a flicker in the night. This is with Fiorain, which you might recognize as, yes, the one that Jay wears for the male version. I love the way this set looks. It's just the whole night theme really does it for me, although this is obviously a lighter armored, you know, lower ranking knight at that. As you can see, it comes with attack boost, speed eating, razor sharp, flinch free, offensive guard, guard up, weakness exploit, and critical boost. There's quite a lot of skills on this one set. Some of those are really good, like attack boost and speed eating when you're doing your first playthrough. You can get those from just the helmet. Then there's the waste here with weakness, exploit, critical boost, and offensive guard if you get benefits from that, which is another really good piece. And again, I, I think some of these pieces, you know, you could use them in current endgame sets because of that. Our next armor set is the Royal Artillery Corps. This comes from the Lucica questline. This is actually the third questline in that questline, I believe. And at the end of this quest, you'll get the armor set design. But you'll first need to do those two quests and then passion melts ice. You may recognize this set as the one that Lucica actually wears herself, which obviously makes sense. And it's a quite nice looking set, I think. Comes with steadiness, recoil down, evade extender, ballistics, ammo up, reload speed, artillery, spare shot, and special ammo boost. Which is why I say this is more of a range set. Things like ballistics here, giving you a little bit more range when you're using your ranged weapons. Still, things like artillery and ammo up are probably going to be the most relevant options, like on the gloves here, or the waist with ammo up and reload speed, both. The boots are not a bad option either. We level three spare shot, and then you get special ammo boost as well as artillery, all on this one piece. Again, really, really good in your opening or first playthrough to have something like this. Well worth going after. But now, let's talk about the Heavy Knight set. This moves us up to a four-star quest, and we are going to hunt with Arlo in the quest Unknown Invader against Gormagala. Not too bad, but it is the third in his quest line, so you'll need to do his first two beforehand to unlock that quest. And frankly, I love the look of this set. This is right up my street. The cape, the one huge shoulder pad, that wonderful helmet with the white plume on the back of it. I, it's just the proper knight set. We go from the knight squire, which is the light version, to the proper knight set. I really like it. But as you can see from the skills here, this is a set that suits a lance or likely gun lance as certain options. With guard up, artillery, load shells, guard four here, uh, offensive guard, razor sharp, and quick sheath. And most of the pieces like the helmet here, like I say, are going to suit something like gun lance. But you can get level two quick sheath on the boots if you're needing that for, say, longsword. And if nothing else, man, this is a top tier pick for a layered set, in my opinion. Now, you might be wondering at this point, what about Rondine? She is also a follower and she has a really cool looking armor set. And yeah, you can actually get it, but you don't get it in the way you might expect. The dignified armor set is actually unlocked once you reach the currency 
Royal Order Certificate number two. So that's required to craft your various sets. So if we look at the Heavy Knight setup here, that's also required to craft that. This is currency you get by doing the follow-up quest, right? But once you actually reach Certificate, certificate Level 2, which is the higher level one, uh, you will actually just unlock this set. You don't actually have to do a Rondine quest. And yeah, it's not a bad set. It's got Focus, Power Prolonger, Evade Extender, Rapid Morph, Evade Window, Razor Sharp. Not bad for something like, say, Switch X, especially with Power Prolonger is really nice. I would guess with Focus and Evade Extender, maybe the Helmet is going to be one of the best picks for that set. Overall, it's a really nice looking set, especially if you want to dye it a little bit. And it's nice to know you can indeed get her set, just in a bit of a weird way. Speaking of weird ways to get sets though, we have our professor here who has a really nice set. And uh, you might have seen in Cotton's video, he's wearing this guy's pants and also his goggles as part of his mixed set. You can get this, and you have to be a male, unfortunately. You see, by doing Rondine's quest line, you will do three quests. The first and second one are fine, but the third one's actually what unlocks this armor set. The five star follower quest, the third in Rondine's quest line, is a cold wind blows, and as you hunt a Kushala Deora. And when you complete this quest, you will unlock the Professor set, which looks incredible. It's a really, really nice set. As a general set, I'd say it's good for survival with things like recovery speed and a bit of divine blessing. And there's convenient stuff like earplugs, hunger resistance, tremor resistance, and of course, flinch free. But there's only really two skills that seem relevant here, divine blessing and marathon runner. You can get level three recovery speed and a bit of earplugs on just the helmet or the really good level three divine blessing on just the gloves. So I do think there's some value in the set because the high levels on single pieces that you can get. But what's interesting is if you are a female, you do not get the set and you cannot get the set. If you're on a female character, you get the other set, the Shari T set, which as you can see from Rage's footage, it appears to be the outfit, the quest giver outfit of Chiche, our little princess who gives us our quests in Sunbreak, which is quite nice, but I don't know, I much prefer the Professor set personally. Of course, they give you the same skills, it's just male versus female versions of armor. Last but not least then is the Commander set. We're talking about the set that Gallius wears himself and it looks wonderful, but this is pretty much one of the last follow quests you're going to do, and it takes place at the end of the Gallius quest line. In the quest, Rage That Never Dies, you will face a furious Rajang to get this reward. And in fact, the information on this says that you need Master Rank 10 or higher, so you will need to have completed the game and reached Master Rank 10 or higher to do this. But normally, this mission requires Master Rank 50 to unlock via an urgent quest. So I'm not sure that information is accurate, but I can only believe it and tell you guys that you need to be at least Master Rank 10 to do this. But as you can see, the base commander set is one of the later sets as we go into orange quality, and it looks wonderful. The shoulder pads, the fluffiness to it. You want to do RPs if you're Gallius. Maybe we'll see Cotton in this a little bit. And it comes with Wide Rage Level 3, Focus, Charge Master, Critical Draw, Quick Sheath, and Punishing Draw. A bit more of a specific set, you know, with something like Focus. Maybe some Great Sword users will get some benefits out of certain pieces of this set, which would make sense. It does have Focus Level 3 on the chip, on the helmet. But I could also see some potential with, say, maybe Switch Axe here. But again, this is another set that I think everyone will be happy to get. For Layered, at very least, certain pieces are really good. But there you have it. That is my full overview of the follower quests and their rewards and where to get them exactly. I hope this was really useful. If it was, please do drop a like on the video so we can keep making content like this for Sunbreak in general. I'm a massive fan of the Royal Order uh, weapons and how they look and their designs. I really hope we see sort of layered weapons at some point. I'm really happy to see the follower quests in general work like this. Uh, it's nice to get the flavor and play with those NPCs, but it'll encourage most players to get involved with them because the rewards are worth it. For now, though, that's everything I've got. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.